Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you for coming back from lunch, and thank you for waiting the extra 10 minutes. Um, let me start the second panel of the conference, uh, which is entitled to Perspectives from the Islamic World. We have four distinguished panelists here who have arrived from different parts of the Islamic world. On my left, from Turkey, Dr. Talha Kozi, professor at Ibn Khaldun University in Istanbul. From Indonesia, Dr. Dadi Dermadi, uh, on my right, uh, a senior lecturer at the Sharif Hiadutala State Islamic University in Jakarta. And uh, then, Professor Masood Akhtar Hazarvi, who's originally from Pakistan, but is now director at the al Hira Educational and Cultural Center in Luton, the United Kingdom. And then we have um, an addition, um, a distinguished um, guest, uh, Dr. Afzal Chowdhury, who's chairman of the Search Peace Foundation in the UK, but uh, originally from Pakistan. Now, um, <clears throat> before I introduce the first panelist, I'd like to do some housekeeping. First, um, if you can mute your phones. I have to do that too, I've done that. And then I have a request for our panelists. This panel is fairly short, just one hour, so I'd like to ask them to keep their interventions to 10 max. Our third speaker, um, Professor Masood Akhtar Hazarvi, hailed from Pakistan, but he has now been living in the UK for over 18 years. He's a director and imam at the al Hira Educational and Cultural Center in London in Luton, sorry, which is north of London. And for nine years, he was an imam at Luton Central Mosque. And prior to arriving in the UK, he enjoyed a successful academic career in Pakistan. He's known for his expertise in Muslim Oriental law and Islamic studies. He holds degrees in Arabic and Islamic culture from Medina in Saudi Arabia. His qualifications also include an IT degree from the UK. Um, and uh, as an Islamic scholar, he will speak about a general, general Islamic perspective about resolving conflicts and tackling conflicting issues. Thank you. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thanks to Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Czech Republic, and OIC Prague branch for organizing and hosting such a tre tremendous and important conference. It is a pleasure and an honor for me to be here and share my thoughts with you on dispute resolution and conflict mediation from an Islamic perspective. As we have seen and all of us know that currently humanity is besieged with all sorts of conflicts. But instead of dealing with conflicts through peaceful means such a dialogue and culture understanding often being dealt to settle or resolve these conflicts through force. The governments are using the might is right concept to settle such conflicts, but the history tells us that this concept where the mighty turn to force and impose their will on the weak does not work. This approach may apply to God's other creations, however, it does not work for human beings as we are given a moral sense, which overshadows all our behaviors. This is moral dilemma requires tackling the underlying problems and unless tackled properly the conflict will still persist it does not go away 
This moral sense is very strong in Islam. Islam means peace in all its, its forms and asks for justice in resolving all conflicts so that the aggrieved party is satisfied with the outcome and there is peace for all. In Islam, the prime approach to conflict resolution is based on religious values, traditional rituals of reconciliation and principle of coexistence. Dear brothers and sisters, Islam advocates living in peace as well as seeking peace within our own selves and living in peace with other human beings, our surroundings and environment. This was the message of Nuha, Abraham, Ishaq, Ishmael, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad, peace be upon them. All conflicts, whether they are personal or within the family and community, are on a national or international level, disturb the relationship of peace. The Islamic principles of peace building clearly mentioned in the Quran also affirm that all human beings have a common origin. Quranic word nafsim wahida. In fact, the basic concept is enshrined in the very first word that Muslims hear when they are born or say on accepting Islam, commonly known as a shahada. Along with this, Islam confers dignity and respect on a human simply by virtue of being a human. The Quran says, we have conferred dignity on the progeny of Adam. This dignity is bestowed by God on all humans regardless of their ethnicity, religion, tribe or nationality. Islam celebrates great diversity within human beings. We come from different backgrounds and traditions. This richness is a gift from our Creator. It is very much apparent within the worldwide Islamic community as you can see at this conference today. The essential lesson from Islam is to have friendly dialogue, collaborate, and cooperate and develop a real healthy understanding of one another. This is the first essential step for living in peace and resolving all conflicts encountered in today's complicated world. There are great many similarities between Islam and Western systems for settling disputes and building peace nationality, nationally and internationally, such as communicating with each other, negotiating, compromising, and solving our differences peacefully. However, however the West is pursuing the peace objective often ignores the contributions of Muslim scholars and practitioners in addressing various international issues. Instead, efforts are directed at altering, modifying, and reforming the Islamic societies toward its specific values and agenda. Thus, as a dominant world power, the West, including the United States, in its conflicts often imposes peace through force, and in simple words, bullying, power politics, while the underlying causes of conflict remain unresolved. Such is the case now, for example, with regard to the conflicts within several Arab countries. As I have said earlier, the Islamic principles are meant to maintain peaceful, healthy, and meaningful relationship with God and with all the humanity. This relationship is disrupted 
by conflicts, whether personal, communal, national, or international. Its peaceful restoration is essential for the sake of fairness and justice. Peace-building efforts work towards preventing an escalation of conflict and establishing a long-lasting and self-sustaining solution. Peace is intimately tied with justice in its Islamic understanding. You cannot, you cannot achieve one without the other. Legitimate grievances of the affected party must be addressed if real and essential peace is to be achieved. Here are some relevant verses from the Quran addressed to Islamic community. O oh, you who believe, be upright to God, witnessing with justice, and let not the hatred of certain people prevent you from acting justly. Adhere to justice, for that is nearer to piety, and fear God. God is informed of what you do. In chapter An-Nisa, verse number 135, Quran says, O oh, you who believe, stand firmly for justice as witness to God, even if against yourselves or your parents or your relatives. Whether one is rich or poor, God takes care of both. So do not follow your desires, lest you deviate. If you deviate or turn away, then God is aware of what you do. Towards this end, Islamic scholars also emphasize promoting Islamic ethics in, or, in order to prevent, mediate, and resolve various conflicts. This must take place along with a personal transformation, developing spiritual awareness through zikr, constant remembrance of God as in grace, praying, fasting, and as well as through acts of charity and love for other human beings. One should exercise compassion and forgive others who have done him or her harm and move away from greed and materialism, selfishness, self-centered views and harming others and work to live peacefully in cooperation with each other. The Quran constantly uses the word sulha in resolving all types of conflicts. It means seeking peace, reconciliation, compromise, and settlement. As such, during the early Islamic history, Muslim jurists developed a number of legal structures and institutions using a variety of techniques to resolve conflicts amicably and achieve peace. Throughout the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him's life, there are numerous stories which reflect his interest in settling dispute in a polite, friendly manner. One example I would like to share with you today is in the reconstruction of Kaaba, a serious quarrel arose over the set, setting of Hajr al-Aswad, the black stone. Each one of the four leaders of the Quraysh was eager to have this honor and ensure he was not outdone by the others. Their disagreement led to an, to an impasse. However, to resolve this matter, one of the leaders suggested that the first person to arrive at the haram in the next morning could be the one to place the Hajar al-Aswad at its place. As it transpired, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the first to arrive at the haram, not wishing to have the privilege all to himself, 
he asked each of the contesting tribes to select one leader. He then spread a sheet of cloth and put the Hajr al-Aswad, the black stone, on it. Asked the leaders to hold it at four ends and together raise it. As a result, a serious conflict was averted by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him's wise and far-sighted action in giving all four leaders an equal honor of placing the stone. I end here today by saying, may God protect all of us and guide all of us to the good for each other. Thank you very much for listening.